mean? What does that mean? The first. The number of elements in A equals X. The next bullet means the number of elements in B equals Y. How about this, this one here? The third bullet, what does that mean? The complement of A and B is empty set. Is nothing, there's nothing in. So what is that? What's, what's the complement mean? What's not in it? So if the complement of A and B is empty set, so what's not in A and B? The number of elements not in A and B. And A and B is the intersection, is zero. So what does that mean if the number of elements not in A and B, the intersection is zero? What does that tell us about A and B? It has all the numbers. The intersection has all the numbers. So if A and B only overlap, A overlaps B, the intersection what can we say about A and B? They are the same. So X equals Y, which equals the universal set of Z. That they're all, everything is overlapping, right? If, if everything is in the intersection, the complement, if everything's inside the intersection, then there's nothing on the outside, right? So that they'd have to be the same set. So how do we determine if there is a, if the, the actual sets are disjoint or not? So let's just write some notes here. If disjoint, okay. if the two sets are disjoint, then so we're going to use the, these properties here. I'm going to use that the number of elements in A is x, the number of elements in B is y. And the number of elements in um, A or B, the complement of A or B, so is, is empty set. So they're only in A or they're in B. And we'll use the number of elements in the universal set is Z. Okay. Notice this is different than the above. It said and, the intersection, where this is or. Okay, the union is or. So there's there's no there's nobody who's not in A or B. Okay, so they're disjoint if. That means, what does disjoint mean again? There's no overlap, not connected. Okay, so then if Z, if the number in the universal set equals X plus Y. Or, you can write that as the number in the universal set equals the number in A plus the number in B. So for example, if I said 48 people skied and 52 people snowboard and 100 people went skiing and snowboarding or snowboarding, I should say. Okay, 42 and 52 and 48 add to 100, 100 people went. Those would be disjoint, okay, because the sum of those two equals the universal set. They'd be disjoint. This, they overlap. Yeah. Not disjoint. The number in the universal set does not equal x plus y. So our example that we just looked at in the quiz. So when there is like, it said that six, 84 people skied and 68 people snowboard, but there was 100 people who went to the, to the ski hill. Well, 84 plus 68 is definitely not equal to 100. Okay, those are obviously, there's going to be an overlap. They're not disjoint. Um, so 
how can we get that? So the number, so we'd have to add A. So this is, ex this is in a situation where they're, they're only in A or B. There's nobody who's not in A or B. Minus, so we'd add these together minus our overlap. A and B. Universal set will equal to the number in A plus the number in B subtract the overlap. Because the reason why is if I add A plus I add B, there's this overlap that was added an extra time. So we need to subtract it off for it to equal the number of elements in the universal set. And that's in the situation where there's nobody, everybody's in A or B. Okay? Just a review from yes. If I asked you to shade A and B, what does this symbol mean right here? Intersection. That's the intersection, which is and. Okay. So if you were to shade, you would shade the intersection. That would be just be that portion there. What does this symbol here mean? Union. And that means or. When we think of union, we think of marriage. It's everyone bringing their stuff together. So here's A, A B. So if we were to shade that, what would we highlight? All of it. Only A plus A and B plus only B would be the union. They're bringing their stuff together. Okay, so intersection is what's in common, basically. Union, they're pulling everything together. Okay, so key ideas on the next page. We just talked about so union, A or B. Intersection is the and, so just some more notes, but we can, if, if, it's, if there's an intersection and they're disjoint, then it'd be empty set, right? So that was going down. Is there anything here I wanted to highlight? Yeah. Okay, so if two elements A and B contain common elements, that means they are not disjoint. They contain number then we can use this formula here so the number in a or b so the combined total of all three a only a and b and b only would equal the number of a plus the number of b subtract the overlap because when we add a and b together there's that extra overlap that's been added an extra time so that's why we have to subtract it off okay do you see that if i pull those apart so these are really overlapping here because it's, if I've already added it in A, if I add it again in B, then we've added it twice. And so that's why we subtract it off. Um, so this is called the principle of inclusion and exclusion to calculate A or B, subtract the elements in, in the intersection so they are not counted twice. So that's why we're subtracting it. We don't want to count it twice once in A and once in B. If they are disjoint, then it's really easy, right? So if it's disjoint, then the number of elements in the intersection would be zero, and then our union would just be the number in A plus the number in B if they're separate, they're disjoint. Okay, um, if we're talking about the set, the elements that are in A but not in B, right? This is A excluding B. Or how else could we describe it? Only A. Given that there's only two sets, if we're only looking at two sets. Okay? So, then we could use the number of A or B. So let's just write down what in A or B, the number in only A, A not B, plus 
only be plus the intersection A and B. So what does that look like? Well, what that's saying is, remember this portion right here would be A excluding B. This portion over here would be B excluding A. And then the inside would be A and B. So we can also get the union by adding these three parts together. Only A plus the intersection plus only B. It's just a whole bunch of term like symbols, but we've done it before, right? It's just adding some notation to it. Okay. So nothing really new. Let's look at an example. Okay, so here is the list of our standard deck of cards, just in case you're not used to playing with them. These are called clubs, diamonds, hearts. Whoops. I'm used to going alphabetical. That's a club. This is a spade. This is a heart. And that's a diamond. Okay, so describe each is a set of what? What does C stand for? S stands for spade. C would stand for club. H would be heart. And a girl's best friend, diamond. Okay, so what's the number, and number of clubs? So how many? We count them. One, two, three, four. I play cards, so you probably know that. Not. total cards? 52. Now, are these sets disjoint? Let's look at that. Um, would, the, would these sets be disjoint? Are there any, over, is there overlap? Can a club be, like, is there club be a club and a diamond? Can a card be a club and a diamond? No. Could it be a heart and a spade? No. So they're disjoint. Describe the unit. So N stands for number of parts. Union, we you would use what word? And or or? Or. Number. Four hearts are there? Because the sets are disjo disjoint? 26. Okay, description, the intersection, uh, that symbol is supposed to be, the N stands for number of spades and hearts. How many spades and hearts are there? Where it's both a spade and a heart at the same time. Empty set would be zero. Okay, so zero. There's zero that are both. You can't be both. You can only be one in cards. Okay, so that intersection symbol means and. Describe whether the elements are um, so mutually exclusive. Which we'll use in probability. Okay, in this case, 
smaller sets are disjoint. So, and whether S and H are disjoint. So all sets are disjoint. Not, yeah, let's just go. So we had uh, clubs, diamonds, hearts, and spades. And that's our universal set. So the complement, what would be the complement of S and U? Or, sorry, S and H. The union of S and H. So it would be what? Yeah? It would be diamonds or uh, what's left over? Clubs. Diamonds or clubs. Because there's nothing outside, right, of those elements. So not a spade or a heart would be a club or a diamond. So that's an example of a disjoint situation. Turn the page. Mm. So here I want to practice our notation. Um, so here we're dealing with the number of sports that require either a ball and an implement, such as a stick, club, and rack. Okay, so which one of these sets actually need a ball, or get uh, sports? You need a ball to play. For badminton, you need a ball? No, it's not a ball. Hockey? No, it's not really a ball. Tennis? Yes. Basketball? Yes. Lacrosse? Yes. Ultimate Frisbee? Nope. Running? You don't need one. Rugby? Yeah, there is a ball, technically. Volleyball, yes. Curling, no. Cross-country skiing. Oh, one's supposed to be cross-country. Oh, this is one word. Cross-country ski skiing, I think. And this will be... Let's cross that one off. Because running and cross-country are the same thing. Okay, cross-country skiing, you don't need a ball. Wrestling, no. Football, yes. Soccer, yes. Golf, yes. And softball, yes. Okay? An implement. Okay? So implement, would badminton need a implement? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm going to use purple. Uh, yes, hockey, yes. Tennis, yes. Basketball, no. Lacrosse. Yes. Ultimate? Nope. Running? No. Rugby? No. Volleyball? No. Curling? Yes. Cross-country skiing? That's debatable. I would, yeah. A pole is a stick. Okay, yeah. Okay, wrestling? Nope. Football? Nope. Soccer? No. Golf? Absolutely. And softball? Bat? Kind of like a stick. It's made out of a stick. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay. Okay, so determine the number of sports that require the following. A ball and an implement. So if we're doing, let's write our notation. The number of, so if we want the number of. And if we're using and, that would be the intersection. So how many do both need both, a ball and an implement? How many need both? Oh, sorry, B and, you're right, B and I. B and I. Okay, how many need both? Four. One, two, three, four. Okay, only B, so how would I write that? Okay, are there some that are, there's some on the outside, yes. So if I only a ball, but not an implement, how would we write that? With a slash. So B, so those set, the ones that are in B, but excluding the overlap of the A, oh, our implement, I. 
So how many are only a ball? One, basketball, rugby, volleyball, football, soccer. So that gives me five. An implement, but not a ball. The number meant infinite, but <laughs> implement, but not a ball. Okay, so implement only. How many of those? One, two, three, four. Four? Agreed? Great. Either a ball or an implement. So now this time we're using the... What symbol? Union. We want the union, ball, or implement. So that means it includes the implement. So that's the, when we want the union, that would be the number. We use a ball only. Well, there's two formulas we can use. Let's actually, I'm going to show you both. So we could use the number who'd have a, use a ball only plus implement only. I'm putting A. Sorry, guys. Implement only plus the number who do both. The intersection. Okay. So that's one way we could calculate. Um, so we've already calculated those, right? They're up above. So the number who did was a ball only was 5 plus implement only was 4. And how many did both? Four. So it gives us a total of nine plus four is 13. Okay. So that's one way we can calculate. Only implement, only ball, and then the ones who did both. The other way, we could, use, we could have also found the total number who used a ball plus the total number who used an implement minus the intersection. And it should give us Total number who use a ball. How many total use a ball? So all the, how many bees do you see total? One, two, three, uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine plus how many total use an implement? Somebody tell me. Eight. Yeah. So notice that what happened here is I added that intersection, the ones who do both, twice. And so that's why. We'd have to subtract how many do both. There was four who do both. Nine plus eight is 17 minus four, which gives you 13. So both ways will work for finding how many are A or B. Or, okay. And last, neither a ball nor an implement. How many would that be? Three? So how could we write that? We'd write that the complement of the union. So how many are not in the union of A or B? Or sorry, not A. What should it be? BUI. The implement. So the complement would be the number of the, in the universal set minus the number in the union. So how many total sports do we have? We had, it says 16. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay, we did have 16 after I crossed off some of those. Um, so 16 minus the union was 13. And you should get three. And does that look appropriate? Was there three sports that didn't do either? So ultimate, one, running, and wrestling, three. There they are. Okay, so getting used to that notation is really important. And be able to write that notation yourself is really important. Okay, so we are on the last example. Morgan surveyed 34 students. So what does that 34 stand for? The number in the universal set. Because it's a total of 34. 
in our math class about their eating habits. So we're dealing with 14 eat breakfast, 16 eat a healthy lunch, and 4 to 30 above eat breakfast and a healthy lunch. That is concerning. Okay, so what are our two sets in this case? The two sets we're going to deal with. We had breakfast and lunch. Healthy breakfast. Oh no, just breakfast and then a healthy lunch. Healthy lunch. Okay, so it says 14, since 14 plus 16 plus 4 equals 34, concluded that everyone eats either breakfast or a healthy lunch. So she's saying that they're not disjoint or both. What error did Morgan make? How many students did not eat? So let's start actually solving the problem ourselves, then we can see where her error was. So she's saying 14 plus 16 plus 4 equals 34. Therefore, hey, these are going to be, um, the, sorry, she concluded that, that there's nobody outside. Morgan concluded that everyone eats either breakfast or a healthy lunch. So there's no one outside that does neither. So let's fill in what we know. What do we know? Four goes in the middle, the intersection, because four is our and, our intersection. So what she did, she did 14 plus 16 plus 4. So if we add these three components together, she's really saying that 14 is breakfast only. Right? So Morgan's logic was let's just write underneath. So 14 would have to have been breakfast. If we're going to add these three together, she's saying 14 is the number who have breakfast only. And 16 would be the number who have lunch only. And then 4 is both. Is that true? When it says 14 eat breakfast, that's false. Okay, this part is false. 14 is not the number of students who have breakfast And lunch only is false as well. How students, how would I write breakfast only? What symbols would I use? How do I write breakfast only? B excluding, so what's in B but excluding the L? Okay, would mean breakfast only. So breakfast only should actually be how many? Should be 10. How did you get that, Jeff? So 14 minus 4, so you did the number in the breakfast minus the number in breakfast and lunch. So 14 minus 4, or 10. So it should be 10 there. In lunch only, how would I write lunch only? So it would be... L slash B. So in L, excluding the ones that are in B. That are, so what's inside L, the excluding the overlap part. So that would be the number in L minus the number in breakfast and lunch. So it should actually be how many who are lunch only? 12. 16 minus 4 or 12. So how many students, because we want to find out, how many students um, eat either breakfast or lunch? So the number that eat breakfast or lunch. How would you find that out? Breakfast or lunch, the union. Add the three together. We want the union, so we want the marriage of the three. Okay, add those two together, so it'd be 10 plus 4 plus 12. 
So it would be the number of breakfast only plus the number in lunch only plus the number in the intersection, lunch and breakfast. So that was 10 plus 12 plus 4, which actually equals how many? 22 plus 4 is 26. So are there any students who don't eat either? Yeah, there would be 8. So it says, um, what error did she make? So she, she should have subtracted the overlap, right? If you're going to do, this is actually was all of A plus all of B, then you would have had to subtract the overlap. If she did 14 plus 16 minus 4, would that give the same answer that we just got of 26? Yes. So she should have subtracted the overlap. Subtracted the overlap. So remember, there's two formulas to get that union of the two. We could do the A only, B only, and intersection, add them all together, or all of A plus all of B minus the overlap. So she should have had a minus 4, and it would have gave her the correct answer. Okay, so those two formulas you need to know for today. And then the second question she asked, how many students do not eat either meal? Second part, we want the complement of A or B. So the number in A... The complement of A or B would be how many students don't eat breakfast or lunch. The number who don't eat breakfast or lunch. So that would be a total number of students, number in the universal, minus the number of A or B. So there was 34 students, and our union was 26, which gives us 8. So 8 don't eat breakfast or lunch, which is not a good thing. You need to eat. That is probably not realistic, I'm hoping. It's hard to, you can't learn on an empty stomach. <gasps> okay, so today's homework um very similar to yesterday's. You can uh, please draw the Venn diagrams in your answer and practice the proper notation. So it's on page 11 to 13 in your workbook. <laughs> 